Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Mind Hostage, a show where real people discuss real issues of overcoming negativity and a negative mindset. I'm your host, Stephen Payne, and I'm glad to be here with you today. Today's episode is brought to you by CBD 911, distributors of some of the purest CBD on the planet. With a 60 day empty bottle money back guarantee, their CBD is certified organic non-GMO. You can visit them at www.mycbd911.com. Hello and thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of Mind Hostage, a show where real people can come together and discuss their journey through adversity and how they've achieved success through managing a positive mindset. I want to talk today about the future of the program and some of the inspiration behind the program. I feel like there's a need. People that are looking for for help as they go through their problems, as they travel through their adversity. and Through my own experiences, have found that conquering depression and negativity, sometimes putting things into perspective and listen to others who have been through something similar really seems to help. And as my grandmother used to have posted in writing above her bathroom sink, she uh, used to reflect every day on a saying that went something pretty close to this. But it said, if everyone were to take their problems and place them into a common heap. Most would be content to take their own and depart. And that really hit me later on because as I went through my own problems, many of which were self-induced, there were times when in order to move forward, I had to kind of look at things from a different perspective and you know when I looked around and realized that I don't own all the world's problems that everyone everywhere is going through their own problems when I realized that and knew that I wasn't alone it, it seemed to put the right perspective on it for me to continue to move forward and and to try to overcome the negative thoughts that seem to prevail. So as we move forward in this program, we'll have guests that have gone through all different types of adversity. Uh, maybe some you can relate to, maybe maybe some you can't, but they've been through their own problems. And, and we want to talk to people who have learned to conquer their issues through, whether it be faith or for mine, it was faith-based, or they've just been able to apply the kind of common principles of self-help and in a positive mindset. In order to validate my position as host of this program and the inspiration that I received, I'll need to share a little bit of my story. And it goes back 53 years I was born to a mother that was one month into her 16th year and a father that was five years older. I believe I was born out of love, but there were other priorities in the relationship. My father had chosen alcohol, and it soon became evident that he had an alcohol abuse issue that um, he had an addiction and he also had a violent nature so he subjected my brother um, my mother to physical and emotional abuse sexual abuse so I was born into that environment and into my fifth year my folks divorced. I had a brother who moved uh, with my mother and I was left with with my father. And 
as we continued through the years. Uh, I was able to see my mother for two weeks in the summertime, but had very little contact. And my father continued his alcohol abuse, but that wasn't the only abuse. There was many women that came in and out of his life and in and out of my life. I don't remember exactly when the first rape occurred, but I can remember the event vividly. I can't remember when the first molestation occurred, but I remember it. Because there were so many events that took place over the course of the years, they tend to blend together. But my father's anger never subsided and his alcohol abuse never subsided. And so oftentimes in between women or when he was with different women, I was the, I was the one object in his life that remained and often the only object that remained for him to focus his anger on. I remember growing up in fear of my life, in fear every moment my father was going to begin to drink and the abuse would occur. I recall events as he beat some of the women unconscious. I recall the instances where we were in fear of our life, where we would pray to God to either make him pass out or stop drinking so that we could find some refuge in the storm. And the years passed by and he brought other women into his life that were, maybe they were angry because they were being abused. But some of those took their anger out on me. There were several. There were several that physically and psychologically uh, abused me. and There were others that also sexually abused me. And I won't get into gory details. I'll leave that to your imagination. But let's just say that it's nothing for a child to have to endure at the hands of his possible saviors. People came in and out of my life and many family members. I never told anyone because I was, I was in fear of this evil man who would focus his anger on me, so I was scared to tell anyone, but I was in hope that someone would know, and certainly the women that came in and out of his life that were abused, that were part of the abuse, would tell someone. So I was always waiting for a hero to appear, and they didn't. I remember feeling lonely and abandoned, that those people, some of the people that I loved, left me with this animal. He tried to tear me down, continued his mental abuse, the things he'd say and the things he'd do, including chasing me with a loaded gun, even on occasion, holding a loaded gun to my head. And it's really hard to explain the fear that folks like this can inflict on their victims that's so paralyzing that they wouldn't tell anyone, that they're in fear to us, in, in too much fear to escape. But it happens. It happens to victims every day. It happens to grown adults every day. It's the kind of mind control that reaches into your very soul. And so with these feelings of loss, of abandonment, of fear, and when I was old enough to question my sexuality that my own father would rape me and molest me. I turned to drugs and alcohol. 
at about the age of 12. Anything I could get my hands on. At the time, LSD, PCP, heroin, cocaine, marijuana. And if there was a pill, I didn't care what it was. I just wanted to numb the pain. And it did for a little while. But the beatings came. The abuse came. My hero didn't. Eventually I was old enough that he couldn't control me anymore and I could go out on my own, but believe me, damage was done. I was a good kid that just wanted to be loved with a good heart, but I was completely lost. Having not grown up with a role model to teach me the value of making good decisions in your life and making the right and wrong decisions, a role model of how a man should be and how a man should act. I didn't really have a measuring stick. So I stumbled and I fell. I made my bad decisions. But I knew I didn't want to live that way. I knew I had a good heart and I was compassionate. Eventually, I found a career. But just like I found in that career, as we go through traumas in life and we try to compartmentalize them and lock them away to seal them up and forget about them, that it's kind of like uh, putting acid in a barrel and sealing it up and locking it away. You may be able to put it away for now, but eventually... It'll eat its way through the lining and the barrel, and it'll leak out. Just like the problems that we lock away, hoping to never reappear, they'll leach their way out into your life and show up in many different forms. And For me, I suppose it was in anger, drug and alcohol abuse, lack of self-esteem, lack of self-control, commitment issues, relationship issues, heart issues in general. I knew that's not who I wanted to be. I tried hard to find people in my life that I could look up to, that I could model. And I did. I found some really good men. They didn't know they were my role models. I I modeled from afar. I looked at them, and they lived the kind of life that I knew I wanted. They were good Christian men. They were stable, honest, and true. Good men with big hearts. I tried my best to model the behavior, to measure my actions by theirs, But I battled and I fought my demons. They showed up. Although I was able to try to model those behaviors, I was never able to escape the pain. Because I never addressed the root problem. So I laid there alone sometimes, even around people. And I hurt. And I paid consequences for my bad decisions and my issues. And I slipped into depression. And there were many times that I couldn't bear the pain anymore. I couldn't imagine myself having to live with that kind of pain for the rest of my life. So I made a decision that I wouldn't live anymore. And each time I placed a gun in my mouth and got ready to pull the trigger, whether it was I didn't have enough courage or whether at that moment I found enough hope that someday the pain would go away, I never followed through. I'd get better. I'd lock everything back up and seal it away and 
try to do my best to put on a smile and do my best to be a better person. And I connect with the church. And things got better and I learned and I grew and I matured. I even got married and started a family. But things showed up in other people and other situations that I didn't know how to deal with. The The pain was still there. The hurt was still there. The scars were there. I had never addressed them. And eventually what I came to realize was it was because I had not allowed God fully into my life. And I had not learned the true value of forgiveness. Because yes, while many things had... Uh, had been done to me, to hurt me, to scar me for a lifetime. I didn't realize that at that point I didn't have to be held hostage anymore to the pain, to the doubts, to the fears, the guilt. And everything that came along with it that I justified on my past And I learned, I thought I had forgiven. I really did. I thought I had moved past it. I tried hard, only to find out down the road when something would trigger those emotions that it would well back up and stir up that emotion in me and pull the scab off the wound. And it would do something that I would regret. But eventually, as I was able to claw my way through my own adversity, to learn to accept the consequences of my own actions, only when I realized that I couldn't blame my actions on anyone or anything else anymore, only when I was able to take responsibility for myself and my actions. And, and it was because I had a big enough why. At that point, it was, it was my children. Because when I reached that point where I contemplated how I would wrap the chain around my neck to hang myself the very last time, that I realized there was something bigger than myself. And how could I be selfish enough to put someone else who I brought into this life through that kind of tragedy and that kind of pain. How selfish of me. And it was only at that point when I was able to take full responsibility for myself, my actions, and my thoughts. Only then did I realize the true value of the need to forgive. And I understood then that forgiveness wasn't for the perpetrator. The forgiveness was for me. True forgiveness was the ability for me to let go of the hurt, to let go of the pain, and to let go of the blame. That when I understood that now that I'm aware of the problem, I have the responsibility to fix it. And I can't blame who I am today on my past, to realize that I'm not defined by my past anymore, that I can stand up and I can take action for my thoughts and my feelings and my emotions. Only when I learned the true forgiveness and I was able to forgive unconditionally did I find the key to my happiness, to my mental clarity, only then did I fully realize how liberating it was to release that pain, to release the excuses, release the anger, and my current struggle to try to release the guilt for things that I've done in my life. Because not only... Should we learn the value of forgiving other people? 
but we have to learn the value of being able to forgive ourselves, to not be defined by our past, to not continue to repeat our mistakes, no matter how we justify them. So, guys, I thank you for listening. I thank you for allowing me to share just a glimpse of my past. I hope to have some great guests on the show. And as a matter of fact, we've, I'll be uploading several episodes at one time when we kick off the show. And I think you'll hear from a variety of guests who have been able to conquer their past to be able to achieve success through focusing on a positive mindset. And I, guys, I welcome you to tune in, welcome you to listen, to like and share our program. And uh, because this is a self-funded program to help others, to even become a member of our Patreon account and help support the show, you can visit us at www mindhostage.com you can visit our Facebook page at Mind Hostage you can email us at themindhostage at gmail.com guys thanks for tuning in we look forward to bringing you an awesome program with many great future guests thank you for your support and I look forward to talking to you guys soon have an awesome day